Welcome to Flash's uh, tutorials. Today I'm going to talk about uh, using SketchUp, using uh, CamBam, um, using the Mach 3 2001 screen set, and uh, tying all these together to affect the tool change um, option that is in the Mach 3 2010 screen set which is also in the uh, Planet CNC USB controller but this session is not going to cover the Planet CNC board I don't have that installed right at the moment so uh, we're going to talk about uh, using CamBam today um, what I've created here in SketchUp is just a, uh, a bit holder uh, which I've made for uh, my shop to hold various bits and to also hold some sharpie markers and I'm kinda of doing this the hard way but for a reason uh, I wanted to try out the tool change option in Mach 3's 2010 screen set and so I want to switch between a quarter inch bit a 1 8 inch bit and a 1 16 inch bit and uh, do that while I'm cutting so um, there's a companion video that goes with this that shows uh, my cutting out of the uh, portion of this uh, bit holder. Um, this tutorial uh, is to uh, provide some backup uh, on the how did I get the files ready. So I I'm going to just do a real simple thing here. Uh, obviously you can do this in SketchUp but just to give you kind of a, a quick overview um, I can take an object in SketchUp and select it and I can go to my plugins I have a tool called uh, export to DXF or STL and uh, you can I, I, I can't recall if this came with SketchUp or whether it was a plugin that I downloaded but this is what I use to to get a uh, DXF file to use in CamBam. So uh, I'm going to select the uh, inches and I want to convert this to uh, DXF polylines and then I'm going to save this file somewhere. I've already done this so I'm not going to do it again but uh, that's, that's how I get a DXF file. Once I have a DXF file I, I'm going to open CamBam and um, here is a, uh, a version I've already completed which uh, is a, uh, uh, a section of, of the uh, bit holder but just to uh, just to show you how this was is kind of done let's just open a DXF file uh, let's just take this bit plate DXF file and open this up this is just uh, this is what I had in SketchUp and we're going to show you how to use this in CamBam, which is fairly easy. Uh, I'm going to select an object that I want, uh, such as we'll start with the circles. Um, I'm going to do a profile, and then I'm going to select this profile, and we'll look at some of the options we have here. I have a clearance plane, which is the distance above the surface that the uh, the bit will travel. I have a depth increment of 0 0.0313, a final displacement of um, 0 0.0313, and I have a target depth of minus 0.275, which should go just below the MDF. Um, I've set my cut feed rate to 20 and my plunge feed rate to 20, and I have uh, holding tabs, automatic holding tabs. Uh, in this particular case I've set uh, three uh, maximum and two, uh, three minimum. Uh, for this particular part I only want two so I would change this to two and my distance is an eighth inch apart and uh, down here is a tool number. I, this is tool number two which is a uh, uh, a 0 0.0625 in mil 
Uh, I'm going to select tool number 0 and I'm going to make this a 0 0.250 tool diameter end mill. And then I'm going to go up here and uh, uh, copy this uh, machining operation to my template. And then I'll go select my next circle, make that a profile, and because I copied the template, all of the settings that I made uh, to the first circle have been applied to the second one. And I'll just go in here and do another one. So now I have the three circles for my uh, um, Sharpie markers. A fourth circle, a fifth circle, a sixth circle, and a seventh circle. At this point I'm, uh, I want to do a, uh, I'm going to change bits and this time I'm going to do a drill operation. So I want to drill a uh, 1 8 inch hole. So I'll change my tool to tool number 1. I want to change this to 0.125. and everything else we just leave the same. And now we can copy this uh, this machine operation to our template and then we'll select the next item to drill and the next and so on. So this is how in CAMBAM we uh, we can make a drawing. That, now the last thing I probably want to do is uh, do my outside line. Uh, so I'll make a profile for that. And again we're doing this in a, uh, uh, a 0.125. This is a 1 8 inch and I don't want to do that. I want to do that in a 0 0.625. Uh, this would be tool number 0. And and now we have it. Now if I go up to the machining operation and say generate tool paths then here is uh, here's all my tool paths uh, and I see here that I've only got two tabs which is okay but I could add a third one down here in the bottom if I would like just by changing the uh, the tabs the holding tabs so I could change this. Now you notice it went from automatic to manual because I've moved them. Um, but if I wanted to make three tabs in here, I would have uh, would change this, put this back on automatic, and then regenerate uh, the profiles again. Uh, the uh, generate the tool path, and now we have a third. Um, holding tab. And then we go back up to machining and say produce the G code and uh, click the button and, and that builds the G code. Okay, so that's, uh, that's pretty much it for CAMBAM. SketchUp we've covered. And here is Mach 3 with the 2010 screen set loaded. Uh, just to show you some of the things about it. This button up in the upper right corner is the reset button. Uh, this, is, this icon here is the tool change button. And this icon here is the, to set up your initial uh, settings for, your, uh, for determining how far off the table your bit is. And this one is if you're just doing a single uh, machine operation with, with one tool change and, and one tool and, no, and no, no additional ones. If we come down here to the tool change uh, tab, we see we have a plate thickness value here, which I've got 0.167. That is my movable plate uh, that I showed you in the other video. 
my fixed plate is this is the uh, X and Y dimensions for the fixed plate uh, which I have to the far left side of the machine. 26.650 is where I have my aluminum fixed plate mounted. The clearance plane is one inch so that's one inch over the MDF so it's actually one and a quarter inch above the, the tabletop. And over here in the uh, um, the other side we have the tool change position so I have my tool change set to X at 0 my Y is at 12 uh, which is about halfway through the uh, the uh, uh, Y axis and then the Z position is at 0 um, there's a few other things you probably need to know about and that is in your configuration for ports and pins we have some things that have to be set up. Now I have set up a, uh, and you'll need to do this, you need a home switch for the z-axis. So I have a home switch which comes in on uh, pin 10 of my controller which is a, a Gecko G540 and uh, it's an active low signal and I also have a probe input which we come down here to uh, of course, I'm also using e-stop, but here's our probe input, which is enabled. Comes in on pin 11. It's active low, and uh, those are things that you would need to set up to use the tool change uh, functions of the Mach 3 2010 screen set. Uh, there is another function in here under under general config that we need to set, and that is over here we want to do stop spindle wait for cycle start this is very important and uh, that's all we need in the general config tab to set this up um, and I don't believe there's anything else that we need um, that pretty well covers the Mach 3 screen set uh, it does require uh, well I suppose they I guess they've fixed it but uh, I had a little problem with this initially working with a different version, the latest version of Mach 3, but that has since been fixed, they tell me. So um, I did uh, end up going back to an older version of Mach to, to get this working. But in the video, um, in the previous video that I recorded, uh, I show you something. This, uh, this icon up here it will take you to the zero position, your X, Y, and zero, Z zero position. The P takes you to the park position which is uh, um, a position that we've defined uh, previously. Uh, the run tab does a cycle start. It will do feed holds and stops and uh, rewinds the, the uh, g-code. Uh, I didn't think I set anything up in limits. Uh, my jog settings really has nothing to do with tool change. Um, so that's about it. That's, uh, that's the settings that I use to do my tool change functions. Um, and you can see that in my companion video, which uh, we have on the internet uh, on YouTube. And for now, I think. Uh, We'll probably go over here and stop this recording and thank you for watching.